Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of The DAN Show, and welcome to my latest 2022 NFL preview video. Today, I'm going to preview the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, if this is your first time here, I just got to ask you a question. Do you like football? Because if so, welcome. You're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button. Join the growing community of football junkies and fans of all 32 NFL fan bases. Now, here's how my videos work. I'm going to start off with three things I like about the Cincinnati Bengals. Then I'm going to give you three things I don't like. Then I'm going to break down the schedule, go over the yearly win total odds. And at the very end, I'm going to reveal if I'm going to put action down on the Bengals. Then now... Let's kick this off. Three things I like about the Cincinnati Bengals. The first thing I like about the Cincinnati Bengals is Joe Burrow. And when he was drafted, I thought the Cincinnati Bengals made a big mistake. I thought they should have took Chase Young. And it's kind of funny because Burrow is being hailed as the local kid despite playing college ball at LSU. Where uh, They didn't really view Chase Young, who started at Ohio State, the same way. And during his rookie season, when he, when he went down to injury while Chase Young went to the Pro Bowl, I, I felt justified. I thought, like, I made the right decision. But turns out to me I couldn't really be more wrong. Uh, it, it, you know, Joe Burrow is now the, the face of that franchise. And it's not just his play, but it's his demeanor, uh, his star quality, if you will. You have his attitude, his toughness. It's really the stuff of legend. And you combine this with the second thing I like about Cincinnati Bengals, and that is their trio of wide receivers, and you have something really special here. Now, while I was wrong about Joe Burrow being drafted number one overall, I was 100% correct about Jamar Chase. On In my show, I have a large amount of Lions fans, and a lot of them thought that uh, the Bengals made a mistake in passing up Panay Sewell and drafting uh, Jamar Chase. But uh, I thought reuniting Chase with Burrow was the right move. I mean, at LSU, when they won the national championship together, they had maybe the, the greatest college offense of all time. And you put uh, Jamar Chase with a fellow 2020 uh, draft pick, T. Higgins, and wildly underrated Tyler Boyd, you have something really special and unique. I don't know if there's an NFL offense with a better trio than the Cincinnati Bengals. In in Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, you have legitimate number one wide receivers. And then you have uh, your slot guy, your number three guy, Tyler Boyd. There's a handful of teams that he would walk into and be the number one wide receiver. Um, bottom line, they're all different skill set. They're all different body type. They all really complement each other really well. Now, I'm not 100% sure they're not the best trio in the NFL, but I can't think of one that's better. And the third thing I like about the Cincinnati Bengals is Trey Hendrickson. Now, uh, Trey Hendrickson played uh, four years with the Saints, but he only started one. In his final season uh, with the Saints, uh, he had 13 and a half sacks, and he parlayed that into a four-year, $60 million deal with the Bengals. And I'll be honest, when I saw this free agent signing, I thought it was a mistake. I thought this was going to blow up in the Bengals' face because I've seen this happen before where a player – has three mediocre uh, seasons, has one big one during his contract year, parlays that, and then drops off the face of earth. That wasn't the case with Hendrickson. Uh, he led the team with 14 sacks, but come playoff time, he really changed his defense. In the AFC Championship game, he had one and a half sacks against the Chiefs, but his production goes way beyond the number. Sam Hubbard on the other side had two sacks, but Hendrickson was against Chiefs Pro Bowl left tackle Orlando Brown, and Orlando Brown had all sorts of problems with him. Sometimes your productivity lies way below uh, the stats, and Hendrickson was just a monster uh, for that Bengals defense, really caused all sorts of problems, both against the run and against the pass. And he, I think that Hendrickson really caused a change on this Bengals defense, and they really played their best during the playoffs. This was not a great defense last year, but in the playoffs, they held the Raiders to 19 points, the Titans to 16, the Chiefs 24, the Rams 23. There's not very many NFL teams that can hold the Chiefs and, and the Rams to a combined 47 points. That's an extreme uh, accomplishment, and kudos. I think a large part of that has to do with Trey Hendrickson really coming in and energizing this defense. So just to recap the three things I like about the Cincinnati Bengals, Bengals I like Joe Burrow, uh, probably the best wide receiver trio in the NFL, and Trey Hendrickson now. Three things I don't like about Cincinnati Bengals. The first thing I don't like about Cincinnati Bengals is the AFC North sweeps. And I'm calling this the AFC North sweeps point because they swept both Pittsburgh and Baltimore last year. Now, they did get swept by Cleveland, but they rested starters the last game of the season. So uh, it was kind of unnecessary. I really look at uh, 
what Cincinnati did is four and one in the play in the division, and then they were six and five outside the division. Now this is important because they may be able to sweep Pittsburgh, they may be able to sweep Baltimore, they're not going to sweep both. So can they go? Um, Four and two in the division this year, maybe, maybe not. But they were six and five outside of the division, and out, out of all the AFC teams or all of the AFC divisions, ten wins was the least amount of wins needed to win a division last year. Bottom line, ten wins may not win the AFC North this year. It may not even be able to get you into the playoffs. I was going to call this point unrealistic expectations because the Bengals are going to have to deal with the first time in a long time as being the target. Uh, the, the four last season, they had three consecutive uh, fourth-place finishes in the AFC North in five straight losing seasons. And this relates directly to the second thing I don't like about Cincinnati Bengals, and that is what goes up, unfortunately, has to come back down. In doing sports betting, uh, one trend I found is that teams that have a streak of losing seasons that have a, a, a massive uptick in wins almost always come back down. Now, I thought that San Francisco had five straight losing seasons like the Bengals did, but they actually went eight and eight in 2014. Then they had four straight double-digit losing seasons. So they didn't have five losing seasons, but they didn't have five winning seasons. They had that eight and eight season. Then in 2019, they went 13 and three and they lost the Super Bowl. Does it sound familiar to Bengals fans? It should. Um, what happened in 2020 to the Bengals was that they went 6-10. and 10. Now, last year they got to the NFC Championship game, so you don't have to be bad forever. Like, you can have that uptick, you can have a downswing, but you can get back up. But you may want to temper expectations for a 2022. Now, a lot of times, somebody, somebody recently, I was just having a conversation about this trend, and he said, well, 49ers, they had a lot of injuries that year. Well, that's the third thing I don't like about the, the Bengals is uh, off-season, actually preseason injuries. Originally, I was going to call this point uh, offensive line injuries, but I also want to bring up the Joe Burrow appendectomy. Now, this didn't happen during preseason. It happened during training camp. And while it's not really an injury, uh, your quarterback needing surgery right before the season starts is not a good thing. Starting guard uh, Jackson Carmen, a uh, 2021 second round pick, he, he caught COVID during preseason. Uh, he should be able to start uh, week one for the regular season. Isaiah Prince, your swing tackle, uh, was also injured. He's questionable to start the season. A uh, new right tackle, Leo Collins, was on the pup list during training camp. Now, he's off the list now it's in, in practicing, but he hasn't played a full season since 2018, including missing all of 2020. Alex Kappa, free agent signing from uh, Tampa Bay, has had off-season surgery. He's now participating. I believe he's a full go in training camp at this time. Uh, basically, uh, multiple members of your offensive line starters and backups have had some sort of off-season surgery or preseason injury. Keep in mind, this Bengals offensive line gave up 55 sacks last year. And then you also have your quarterback who needed surgery right before preseason. You combine that with multiple members of your offensive line going down and needing surgery. This is never a good sign. So just to recap the three things I don't like about the Bengals, I'm going to call it an AFC North target. You have to deal with uh, NFL history and a lot of injuries this preseason. Now I'm going to go over the schedule, uh, the reveal the yearly win total odds, and I'm going to let you know if I'm putting action down on the Bengals. Well, first off, the Bengals open the season with uh, four of their first six games are on the road. And I'm going to be perfectly honest, I, I think Pittsburgh beats them week one. Now, after those first six games, they get two of their next three are, are at home, and then they travel to Cleveland for a really fun uh, Halloween game on Monday night. And uh, uh, Cleveland doesn't have uh, Deshaun Watson. He'll still be suspended. So I really could see before to buy three straight wins. Now, they get a nice advantage um, week 11. They're, they do travel to Pittsburgh for Sunday night, but Pittsburgh doesn't have a week 10 buy, so Cincinnati gets an extra a week rest before playing against a, a divisional pro opponent on a primetime game. And again, uh, four out of their next six opponents after the bye are on the road, and then they get uh, two really tough home games. You get Kansas City and Cleveland, who will have uh, Deshaun Watson playing for them at that game. And then you 
end the season with uh, two home games, which is always good, but they're really tough opponents. You get Buffalo and Baltimore. Uh, bottom line, this schedule is really brutal, and I'm going to be perfectly blunt here. I don't think the Bengals are going to have a winning season. Um, the yearly win total odds is uh, the same for both Barstool and Caesars. The numbers are slightly different. Barstool over 9.5 is a negative 134. Under 9.5 is plus 110, where uh, Caesars has um, over 9.5 at negative 135 and under 9.5 at plus 115. Now, I like the under, and you're getting some pretty good numbers, and this schedule is absolutely brutal. I mean, after the bye, there's a chance that they could beat Cleveland. Maybe they can beat Pittsburgh the extra week, but it wouldn't surprise me if they end the season 1-7 and seven or 2-6. and six. I mean, this is a really tough end of the season schedule. Um, Action is really heavy on the over. Uh, the general betting public likes over 9.5. Like I said, I like the under. I feel really good about it. I'm actually putting action down on the under, and I suggest you do the same. Now, Bengals fans, it, it, tell me why I'm wrong. Drop a comment below. Let, let's talk football. Now, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Like the video, like the video, and ring the bell. That way you're notified every time I come out with a new video. Tomorrow, I'm going to break down the Los Angeles Rams. So I will see you tomorrow.